that right there is the sample tree for the Tokyo regional headquarters of the Japan Meteorological Agency. And right now we're in Yasukuni Shrine. Yasukuni Shrine or Yasukuni Jinja. And we're looking at the tree that measures when the Sakura season starts here in Tokyo. And it's a really beautiful tree. It's crooked. It's not perfect. It's being helped by several stands, you can see. It's covered in canvas. Leans over to the left, but it's still a work of art and it's absolutely beautiful. There's a big stand there. This is the tree that determines when the season starts. And it, it, they determined yesterday was the day. And you can see right now, it's, it's got a lot of blossoms opening compared to just 24 hours ago. It's beautiful. Let's take a look at this branch here. Wow. Oh, there's a bunch of them. So the cherry blossoms, hey everybody. So the cherry blossoms are um, five days earlier than normal, but four days later than last year. Last year was a lot was a lot earlier than ever before so the weather in japan has been warmer over the years but this year warmer than most and it's about i don't know 30 percent i'm afraid to get to go behind it i'm gonna walk around the tree a little bit let's see if i can walk around the tree i don't know if that's a bad thing but there's a lot of people there's a lot of people taking pictures of the tree, you can see. Just want to get out of their view. And we're going to walk around Yasukuni Shrine, and, and this is a really popular place to go and take a look at the cherry blossoms. Wow, it's such a wonderful view. You have one of the, one of the uh, buildings here, Yasukuni Shrine, on the right side, just as a really beautiful backdrop to this one. Now, this tree is the index tree. It's a Somei Yoshino tree, which is the normal variety of Sakura trees here in Japan. And these tend to bloom around, um, well, they start blooming like next week. But this tree is very important and you can see it's been circled around with gates at this time of year. There's typically a, a smaller fence around it, but now with a lot of people taking pictures, they put a massive gate around it. It's a very important tree. And every prefecture in Japan has a sample or index tree that determines when the season will start. If you don't know by now, um, cherry blossoms in Japan are a big deal. This is the index tree for Tokyo and has been for a while. It's looking kind of old too. A lot of the um, Somei Yoshino trees don't last for very long, about 60 years before they get a little bit too old. And uh, this one looks like it's <laughs> it's had better days but still in pretty good shape so Tokyo might need a new index tree and we're not sure where that would be there it is behind me um, every prefecture has an index tree as I said uh, it, it, they might be looking for a new one there's no real reason why the index tree is here in uh, Yasukuni it's just sort of a coincidence just sort of picked that way um, I put an article that was really well written um, with a personal account in the Japan Times. You can see that in the description. I think you should check it out. It was written last year. Kind of um, gives you an idea of why uh, we need an index tree. And uh, um, I, I like the writer's take on it. Um, but that's it right there. This is the tree that determines when the cherry blossom season starts. Now, as I said before, the cherry blossom season is so early this year and that ruins a lot of people's trips but it should be no surprise since last year was was so early as well um should be no surprise that the that it starts let's take a look here wow right there you can see it's starting to blossom let's go take a look at that tree it, it should be no surprise if you want to see cherry blossoms in tokyo you should start and never walk in the middle of the road going towards the shrine if you want to see the cherry blossoms in Tokyo, you should get here um, the middle, uh, like like between the 18th, uh, I'd say the 18th, you start to see some varieties blossom, but I'd say the 20, between the 23rd and the 28th, you're going to see really great blossoms. And after 
the 28th, you've pretty much hit the peak and then they start to fall the first rain. By about March, April 5th, they're usually gone or on the way out in Tokyo anyways. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. This one's pretty early too. I think it's a different variety. It's hard to tell. I'm not a botanist. I do play one on YouTube. Hey, he's up to 71. Thank you. Uh, the cherry blossoms look really beautiful on uh, sunny days when the sky is blue and the white blossoms really come out in pictures. But we have a cloudy day today. And I'm zooming in, so you're going to lose a little bit of the quality, but you can see the cherry blossoms are looking pretty nice in this area. Yasukuni is celebrating its 150th anniversary, so it was established a year after the Meiji Restoration. Oh, wow, this is going to be so beautiful in a week. Check it out. I mean, if you go straight, you see a ton of uh, other cherry blossom trees. And after the meteor meteorological ag agency announces the season starts, which they did yesterday, in about seven days' time, we should be at full bloom. That's typically the way it goes. Look at the way that the, this tree just kind of keeps going in the way man has, has helped the tree by putting that stand there. I love that. How humans and nature work together to increase the beauty. Look at that. That's such a beautiful thing, right? Look at the moss on this tree. It's so beautiful. So many levels of nature on this thing. Yeah, if you guys like these cherry blossom episodes, hit that like button and then I'll try to do one tomorrow with some cherry blossom uh, food and Ginza. I think I'm gonna go in there tomorrow. Over there in the distance across the path, you can see the index tree again from a distance. Um, there's a, still a bunch of people. Everyone is attracted to that one. It's just the one that's in the news yesterday. So as soon as something gets in the news in Japan, a lot of people will come really quickly. It's beautiful. At night, this has usually been one of the really nice places to come for the cherry blossoms at night. They light them up. But last year, because they were renovating Yasukuni Shrine, um, the festivities were not as good as they were in years past. Here's a great shot looking back at the entrance to the shrine. You can see with the dark wood, natural wood with it and the green roof. You can see the white cherry blossoms a lot better. And we're just at the beginning of the season. For the next seven days, it's gonna be just incredible. And then if it doesn't rain, the petals will stay on longer. So we could get 10 days, we could get 12 days, or we could get just seven days. But from here, the season has officially started. Tonight should be pretty good, even though there's not a lot of blossoms. Even though there's not a lot of cherry blossoms, I think tomorrow and tonight and this weekend are gonna be pretty fun. And then next weekend's gonna be huge. All right, I'm gonna take you one more time to the uh, index tree because that's the that's the story. All right, check it out. There's the index tree, and there are people that are taking pictures of it, and you can see um, how important it is and how protected it is with that canvas around it, and it's just through the entrance um, towards the shrine. Yesterday, the Japan Meteorological Agency said that this tree produced five blossoms and therefore opened the season. But I can see um, since yesterday, a lot more blossoms have come out. The weather is so warm. It's supposed to get cooler tomorrow, but tomorrow will be, uh, but I, I think the blossoms are just on the momentum of, of popping out. So they're gonna keep coming out despite chilly weather. No street food yet. Uh, Lindsay Riley writes in, uh, thanks so much for your videos that helped me plan our trip to Japan. Countdown is on, and in nine days we will be there. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see them. If you do, if you do come to Japan, you don't have to plan on just seeing the cherry blossoms in Tokyo. For me, Tokyo, and there's the index tree, to, Tokyo is not the best place to see cherry blossoms. 
and I, I don't have to say believe it or not, just believe it. That there, it's about connecting with nature this time of year. You wanna find places that are more natural, I think. And maybe even when you're hiking, going out to the woods, out to the mountains, the blossoms start, start to come out in the middle of April and you can have a much better um, connection with nature. So I'm gonna just give you one more look at the index tree, then we're gonna move out. It's beautiful. I love the old trees. I have so much respect for old trees. Any tree I love, any tree, but just the older trees, I really have a lot of respect. They've seen a lot. In this tree, I don't think it's as old. Uh, you know, sakura trees, you've seen big ones that last for hundreds of years, like the one in Fukui a couple of years ago that I put on the Only in Japan Go channel. It was 370 years old, but the um, uh, Somei Yoshino trees, trees usually peak around 60 years, and this one looks like it's at its peak now. It's about 20%, maybe 15 or 20% blo bloomed. Hey, Difference Engine, I don't wanna, I wanna pay some respect to the shrine. I don't really wanna focus on it in this live stream, but I'm gonna walk now and leave. There's the index tree. I'm gonna walk now out of it and you're gonna see the shrine in the background, okay? Nobody here, I know this is, some people say is a controversial shrine, but at this time of year, you don't think about that at all. You can see it now in the background on the right side. I don't, I don't walk in the middle. Never walks in the straight, in the middle of the road, going towards shrines. Always walk to the right or the left. And that shows respect because Kamisama or the god, gods will be walking straight through. So you, you don't want to walk in the center. Usually it's tourists walking in the center. So never go in the center of the road. Always stay on the left or the right. Um, these are sake barrels, and usually they're presented by companies um, as offerings to the shrine. So these are the ones that have been presented recently. You can see the company names down there. It's pretty neat. These are, um, this isn't sake to get drunk on. This is sacri like, um, I don't know, for, for worship. And sake means Nihonshu in Japanese. We would say Nihonshu, which means the drink of Japan. And it's a very important drink to Jap uh, J Japanese society. And when I got married, I had to drink sake. <laughs> it wasn't a lot, but it came in a gold cup. Here's the gate, the uh, second gate. Uh, Tori coming into Yasukuni Shrine. And you can see these trees, they're really not, not bloomed out here. It's mostly on the inside. So I'm going to take you out and I'm going to show you um, one of my favorite places in Japan. We're gonna keep the live stream going a little bit longer, but now I'm gonna turn back and show you the gate to Yasukuni Shrine. Celebrating its 150th year. And if you do come to Tokyo, this is kind of one of those places you do have to make a stop to take a look at the cherry blossoms. Usually inside there um, you would, uh, is, is the most beautiful place. And if you go to the right, that's where you're gonna find the index tree or the sample tree for, the, for Tokyo. Last year was a tough year for Yasukuni Shrine to come here because, and cel uh, celebrate because uh, it's under construction a lot. To celebrate its 150 years, they decided to renovate a lot of it. And you can still hear the construction going. So I think it's going to be such a beautiful place next year when the Olympics come. Next uh, cherry blossom season, it's going to be a really, really beautiful place to come and just uh, uh, chillax underneath the trees. Typically, the, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, I've come here like a dozen times and there's usually um, a lot of salarymen out here underneath the trees when it's lit up during that week and uh, let's see here if we can cross the street the Tokyo's garbage truck going by I'm gonna take you now to the entrance of Yasukuni and then across to Kitanomaru Park and show you um, the Budokan and to show you the status of the cherry blossoms in that area to get an idea of what, where we are in the season 
on uh, March 22nd, 2019, 2019. Uh, once again, we just took a look at the index tree. Uh, you might want to watch the playback if you, if you came to tune in for that one. It's a pretty interesting tree, but you can't live stream there for 20 or 30 minutes. It just kind of gets boring. But I will show you some places in the park. Um, there you go. Like right here. And we do have some cherry blossoms that are out. Let's go take a look at the status of the ones in the outer part of Yasukuni Shrine. Oh, and I like, check it out. I like the history that they're showing. While they're doing construction, they're showing some of the history of Yasukuni Shrine here. And although it's a, it's a controversial place um, for a lot of the countries in Asia, I, I, I don't think at this time of year, we, I don't, nobody really focuses on it. And I've, I heard there's a lot of Chinese tourists here and a lot of Korean tourists here. I don't think that that's sort of, oh, look at that. You can see people from, uh, wow. I can't, I don't know what year this is. It's a Showa 26, which means I was born in Showa 49, which is 1974. So 49, so 23 years before 1974. You guys do the math. See people cleaning the grounds of school kids cleaning the grounds of Yasukuni. There's Showa 34, 90 years ago. No, that can't be 90 years ago. It's pretty nice. All right, let's take a look at these trees. Let's see the status. They're putting up the lights. This is a good sign. Last year we didn't have them. Now they have the light sockets on this wire. So that means they're gonna have illuminated with lanterns and they're just getting started. That's pretty good to know. Last year, it was, I came here and was kind of disappointed. This year, no disappointment at all. Check it out. There's a beautiful bunch of them right there. Oh man. Very nice. So you can see if, if you were coming to, uh, some varieties have bloomed. Hold on a second. Here I am. Some of the varieties have, have already really come out. I, I showed on Instagram uh, last week before I went to China that there was a tree that was at full bloom and it was a different, it's a different variety. That, now it's, it's the Somei Yoshino tree, which has the white blossoms that you'll see everywhere all over. Uh, Tokyo and all in the parks. They're blooming right now. They just started but the other varieties have already bloomed And then there's some varieties that will bloom a little bit later But the peaks the peak day this year, I believe is gonna be March 28th just That's in my heart. I can feel nature <laughs> I'm gonna say March 28th and March 29th and March 30th and then after that all the petals will start to come down in a blizzard and it's one of the most one of the most beautiful sights is when you see all of the petals with a gust of wind just um, flowing in the sky and coming down like rain, real gentle onto the ground. That'll happen around April 1st in Togo. But, you know, they're, they're blooming at different times all over the country, so you don't have to focus on Tokyo. In fact, I never really like Tokyo's cherry blossoms. I usually try to make one or two trips to the countryside. This is a beautiful one. Hey, Mohammed, happy to see you back in Japan, currently in Hakone at an onsen. What? You're, in, you're here in Japan. Loving the start of the Sakura season upon us. Let's catch up some time. Definitely. Let me know. Send me a message, man. Ah, oh, it's great you're here in Japan. Perfect timing, too. I love the way that they wrap the tree to protect it from the cold. This is a significant tree. Um, it's a different variety. It's just starting to bloom. You can see the... Yeah, you know what? They never stand still for you. The wind is just, just enough to make it, <laughs> make it sway left to right. So it's not perfect in the shot, but this tree looks like it's quite important. They've, oh my word, they've wrapped it from the bottom, the very bottom in straw, all the way to the top. Check this out. I love that. Very nice. And this tree is just starting to bloom right now. 
Let's see if I can get... Yeah, there you go. This is not a uh, Some Yoshino. This is the different variety. It doesn't say... Usually the trees will tell you with a sign on it which variety it is. Shinjuku Koen. Oh! That's another thing I want to tell you guys. Yeah. Big, big news this year, okay? Starting yesterday, Shinjuku Gyoen, which is the uh, park in Shinjuku. It's like the central park in a way of, of Japan. It's got beautiful astroturf like grass. It's real grass, but usually gets destroyed in the spring because there's millions of people descend on the Shinjuku Gyoen. It's 200 yen typically to enter Shinjuku Gyoen. They raised the price to 500 yen. It's the first time they've raised the price since 1994 for 25 years. And uh, I, I mean, I think 500 yen is way too much. That's more than double in one year. I don't know why they did it. I guess it's a, it's a, gra a cash grab because the tourists are going coming here and they want to limit the numbers of people coming in. It usually gets ridiculously crowded. All right, this is all new. So just a heads up on that, if you're coming to Tokyo, if you've got a family of five, it's gonna cost you 2,500 yen instead of um, 1,000 yen now. That's kind of a big deal. It's gonna cost you 1,500 yen more if you have a family of five to go into Shinjuku Gyoen. It used to be 200 yen per person, and now it's gonna be 500 yen, just so you know. Hit that ATM if you're going. This is all brand new. This was not, this, this area was all like, um, was all like soil was here. And they used to have yatai or like stands to go and get beer and yakitori and stuff. And now it's just a park. This is interesting. It's different. It's new. Now it's some more cement, I guess. They protected the trees better. That's good, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to miss that, that Showa era vibe, though. It still felt like it did 30 years ago when the Showa era was here. We're now in Heisei 31. Oh, there's some girls in nice kimono. They're on their way out. Yeah, Taylor Mac, we have a wonderful community page. I see we got some, some patrons, supporters uh, of the Only in Japan channel here. On Patreon, we have a community page where a lot of, just, we have 500 community members um, in Patreon right now, and people will share their photos on the community page. So it's a great way to to share your trips in Japan, to give advice. And it's a smaller group of people, which I like. I can manage that. I can manage that in, uh, oh, on Patreon. So this tells you what you can't do. I guess there's no more boozing in Yasukuni. Used to be a lot, we used to bring lots of beer here. In fact, I think I sat right underneath this lantern three years ago and was boozing it up. No drones, no speakers, and uh, no yeah, no, basically no partying <laughs> and no, no drunk drone flying. It's the very strict with uh, drones here in Tokyo. You, you, I know a lot of YouTubers will use drone footage. You really do have to get a permit or you could be fined up to $5,000 if they do catch you with a drone. Wow, check this out. have a, a free Wi-Fi at Yasukuni Shrine. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. So you can get a guide um, around Yasukuni Shrine. I wonder if Peter is the narrator of the Yasukuni Shrine guide. He's, Peter's the narrator of, of the Tokyo Tower. Um, if you go up Tokyo Tower, that's at the very top, you'll have the, the smooth tunes of Peter Van Gaum introducing you to the uh, Tokyo Tower history and the, and the views from up there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Damn, Peter's on a roll, isn't he? I think he might be live streaming at a, an auto show and he's also um, the voice of the uh, safety video for ANA, which I've heard like three, four times. It makes me pretty comfortable when I get on ANA. <laughs> Especially when he says brace for impact. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, I'm taking you now to one of my... Oh, he's finished now. I'm getting reports that he's now finished. He's filming for his channel. He's, he's going to start not doing live streams, but actually filming and, and being creative like YouTubers. This is my live streaming channel. I have a main channel where I'm, I edit the footage. By the way, there's an episode coming really soon. Two of them from Kyoto. Um, I'm taking you right now. But he's filming and he's going to be... Um, he get, he's got a new camera. The GH5, which is the camera I've had for two years. So I'm excited. Wow! 
there's a lot of kimono people down over there. Check it out. I, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think it's time to go over there. Wow. All right, let's go over to that other side. That's Kita no Maru Park. That's one of my favorite places to go. I love that park. Oh, we're, we are way too early for this one. I think I came here last year a week too early too. Over there is the uh, Embassy of India. You see that building there? That's the Embassy of India. And I've, I've been there a couple times last year. You can see a lot of people are here in kimonos. I guess it's uh. What is what the first day of spring? I don't know what why why people I can't I'm raking my mind right now to think why people are dressed up. Were they just hanging out at the Budokan? Is that why? Because whoosh, right there's the Budokan. That's where um, the 1964 judo and martial arts events were held for the Olympics. It's also where I saw Eric Clapton play a few years ago. It's also where they're going to be doing more judo in 2020. I like that. I like it when they, they recycle the venues for the Tokyo Olympics. I'm going to go over to the Olympic Stadium as well in the next couple of weeks and show you what the progress is right there, right now on the stadium. Wow, the kimonos are so colorful and beautiful. Check it out. All right, check it out. You can rent boats and ride around in the moat. It's Friday, it's a weekday, people are working. Hey, look, they're competing with the duck. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We don't have sharks in this moat. We have ducks. Killer ducks. <laughs> the ducks are now circling the boat, getting ready for the attack. Duck one, duck two. They're flanking right now. They know all the modern, modern war techniques. There's another paddle boat in the distance. Um, but... On the weekends, and especially this coming weekend, probably in two days, this is going to be completely filled with boats, uh, with uh, guys and girls on dates. It's going to be so beautiful. Um, and these trees that are, are just kind of sloping down here into the water, just onto the edge of the water, they're uh, Yoshino Some, Some Yoshino trees, I believe. And they will be bloom, bloomed in about three days, I think. Wow, they're so close. A lot, of, a lot of selfies going on. Just want to get out of the way. I don't want to get in someone's selfie. I'll be, this, this is like an important day for people. I'll be memorialized on the back of, on the, on the, in the background of their photos. Oh, I think it's a graduation from a university. That's why. It's a university graduation. Oh, that's right. I saw on the news yesterday. That's why there's, there's uh, people in suits, men and women. They've graduated from university. Congratulations, omedito. We say congratulations, we say omedito, omedito gozaimasu. Only Japan photobomb, Jason, you got that right. Yeah, th that means Tokyo Disneyland is going to be super crowded because all the kids are going to be out of school, the college kids now. So get ready for, la I went with Kanai two years ago to Tokyo Disney Sea. All right, are you listening? I, I know you're listening. It was four and a half hours to wait for one ride at Tokyo Disney Sea. Four and a half hours, and they lit, they wrote it too. Four hyphen three, uh, four colon three uh, three zero. 
it wasn't four minutes and 30 seconds because the line wrapped around forever. And uh, we were just freaked out. Like, who would wait for four hours and 30 minutes? Who was that last person in line? And what, what were they thinking? There were no, the fast passes were gone by like, by like noon. Afternoon, there's no more fast passes and people just wait. Let's go to the other side. That, that down there, um, this is Kudansta, would be the name of the station, closest to Yasukuni Shrine. You can get there if you have a J, if you're coming with JR, you can walk from uh, Yotsuya and Ichigaya. Probably Ichigaya is a cl closer walk. You can walk from Ichigaya in about 10 minutes to Yasukuni. Oh, now you get to see really closely. That's, that's where we are with the cherry blossoms right now. That is where we are. There's like 15, no, 10, 15% bloomed. Yeah. So. Not exactly. We're not quite there yet. Again, the people walking kimonos uh, are university graduates. I guess in the Budokan they had the ceremony. How cool is that? I saw Eric Clapton playing in there, and, and uh, these people had their, their graduations where, where Clapton played. Very cool. He's telling, he's telling everybody to go on the right side. Why? I love that about Japan, though. People follow the rules. Everyone's walking on the left. And then if you're coming from, if you're coming from the station, uh, this is Kudansta Station, you'll walk this way. And to keep it from getting total chaos, they put this here so that they can keep all the graduates and the crowd leaving there. And people coming into Kitanomaru Park are coming on the right side. Tokyo Disneyland does grad night. I don't think so, but if you just graduated, that'd be probably where I'd want to go with my friends. You know what I mean? This building here is very significant. This is where, this is where they tried um, Japan's war criminals in the night after World War II. I remember that building is quite significant. Um, and that building right there is the Showa era, the last era for the last emperor before the Heisei period has a museum in there that's really good. I think it's it, not enough people go there and see it. I don't think they have a lot of English support, but it's an amazing museum. And this is where um, they had the trials after World War II. So it's a, it's a pretty significant building. It's under construction and under renovation now. I don't know why, if that's the building you want to, to celebrate for the 2020 Olympics, but it's a very culturally significant building. All right, so as the graduates make their way out, Let's go. Let's go up this way. We're gonna walk through Kitanomaru Park, and I'm gonna, I'm going to show you a little bit of the Budokan, and we're, we're basically just checking out Tokyo's cherry blossoms to see what we have here. This this live stream, um, there's a group photo. <laughs> Lots of students. So this is the gate going into the Kitanomaru Park now. So inside of this park is a lot more relaxed than Yasukuni, and I believe you can drink booze here. I love how everyone is sticking to the right. It's like a human, human highway. We have a, a median to keep people to one side. Let's, we're gonna check out um, the cherry blossoms in Kitanomaru Park, and this is, this is the park. This is where the 2020 judo events will be held, right there in the Budokan, which is looming over us, just over the sign right there. So what we're gonna do for the rest of the live stream is we're gonna walk over towards this hiruba or this wide area where the lake is and check out uh, a cherry tree where we did the Only in Japan meetup last year. We did a meetup for Only in Japan here in Kitonomaru Park. Um, let's go see what that tree is looking like right now. That video is here on this channel as well. You can see, um, I think we had about 25, 30 people come out for the Only in Japan meetup here in Tokyo, just people who are visiting.
Wow, a lot of people here from the graduation. Oh. They're telling everyone to go to the. They're telling everybody to go to the other side. Ah, I don't want to break the law. <laughs> There's a sign that says. It says mothers and fathers. Do you see there? <laughs> That's really funny. Mothers and fathers go in through that door. I guess if your son is son or daughter is a graduate, you walk through that door. They're saying graduates on the left sides and the normal traffic go to the right. I can't get through that way, so I'm gonna have to cross the street. It's getting pretty crowded. We're right now walking to Kito no Maru Park to the cherry, tree, the sakura tree that we had our um, Only Japan meetup last year. And if I do do one, I'm gonna make an event on the Facebook page. Only in Japan TV is our Facebook page. And I might do a meetup either this weekend or next weekend. Wow, there's a lot of graduates. See, they're holding up their diplomas in front of the Budokan. Those are some big diplomas. It's bigger than mine. The size matter. That is a big school. It's interesting though that the men wear suits and the women wear kimono, isn't it? Okay, so the university is Senshu Daigaku, Senshu University. So those of you on the uh, on the internet right now, if you want to Google or use Twitter or Instagram, if you go uh, Senshu University, you probably see a bunch of photos from today. S E N S H U University. All right, so. What are they doing with that? <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> it's pretty cool, you get a see a slice of life walking through the park. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Not a kimono, a hakama. Thank you. You're right, they're hakama, hakamas. Yeah. All right, onwards from the Budokan. Hakama is just the bottoms. I've worn a kimono maybe three times in my life. Twice for NHK, once for my wedding. All right, here's, here's the park. And this is a nice park. It's not, it's a little bit more chill than Yoyogi Park, which is basically where all the craziness is. Yoyogi Park is where most of the foreign um, residents will go to have their cherry blossom festivals. All the foreign residents under the age of 30 <laughs> are there. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just sort of, that's where I went when I first came to, to move to Tokyo. All right, so here's a tree that we were at for the 30 people who came to the Only in Japan meetup last year. It's not, it's not in very blooming shape. It's still bare. Boom. That's the tree right there. We sat under there last year and uh, This is Kita no Maru Park, which is right across the street from Yasukuni. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, busy with the students, but typically we have a little bit more bloomage. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. A little more bloomage than right now. Whoa. A little dust storm going on. And these are all university students. Uh, Ryo Ishibashi, if you pitch in 10 bucks, will you get street food? Uh, say, can you save that for tomorrow? 
I don't see any street food though, that's the thing. It's pretty bare right now. And tomorrow I intend to do a um, live stream in Ginza. And it's gonna be a street food episode. So if you're interested, if you did, it, actually if you did give it right now, it'd be, it would go towards tomorrow. Promise. It, tomorrow will be a, a street food episode for Only Japan Go. was nice. Hey, Aravind, thank you. I'm a huge fan of Only Japan. I'm from India, Tamil Nadu, Chennai. I'm unable to become your patron due to some error, but I'm not giving up. Thank you. We'll work out what the problem is with Patreon. In fact, if you have a way to get in touch with me, I will send you a postcard for that. That's so nice of you. I know I send postcards to, we have a postcard club on uh, Patreon and I send postcards to our supporters who are part of the club. And yeah, if you can get, if you can send me a message or something, I'll, I'll be happy to send you a, uh, a post. Hey guys, I don't know if we're back online, but I think after that picture was taken, <laughs> after that picture was taken, I think a thousand Instagrammers and, and twi tweeters and TikTokers got onto the internet and started posting the picture. So we might have lost a signal just because a bazillion people got online at the same time. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Woo, the wind's picked up here in Kitanomato Park. We're back, baby. I'm a, I'm a little bit parched from always talking. I'm going to stop at vending machine, let you guys pick what you want. I appreciate all the support. Um, it's a community drink. I'm going to see if it's, uh, if it's enough to share with the 469 people <laughs> watching right now. I don't think it's enough. Let's see. Oh, this is a Keating, a Keating vending machine. Let's see what we got. The video is buffering. Right, let's see if we can do here. All right, I tried to reset the live stream, so we're back live again. Oh, there's not really that much stuff here. So this vending machine, this is a Keating vending machine, but I don't really see anything too interesting. We have apple juice, black coffee. This is a barista coffee uh, from, uh, I think it's Daido coffee. It's all right. I don't know, I'm not really excited about this. The green tea looks good. Um, this is hot. These cans are hot. They've been heated, and these are cool, cold ones. Um, let's see if we can find something better. There's got to be something better. I think there's one out here. No beater. There's a cafe inside here, which has limited hours. Usually when I walk by here, it's never open. It's open now. This is a cafe across from the Budokan. Okay, hold on a second. There's, I see there's a couple of vending machines right now. There's one. There's a vending machine corridor. Let's go in here. That's where all the kids are smoking. I think they're too young to be smoking. Let's see what we can do here. All right, Mother Load. Tommy Lee, any recommendations? Um, melon soda. That's pretty hardcore. Uh, Mountain Dew. Columbia coffee looks good. I like those little berries. That's coffee berries, I think. Let's see. Ice cream. Mm hmm. Crafted tea. That looks interesting. What are these here? Craft tea with peach and citrus. Oh, whoa. Coca-Cola lime? What? Do you guys have this in the USA? Coca-Cola lime. I've never seen this before. Interesting. 
Oh, that's a choice. Don't do it, writes in John. All right, you can listen to John. Got the same name. Peach tea looks good. Beautiful Bob agrees, don't do it. Hot lemon is so good. I drank this in uh, Kyoto. This was really, really good. And then whoosh, just to the other side, we have more tea options. Oh, look, it's peach nectar. Nice. This is also in the running, peach nectar. Hoji latte, which is tea latte, which is quite good. There's a Starbucks across the street. They're serving the sa Sakura latte, but I think all the YouTubers have done that. Itoen is, is one of my favorite. Itoen is one of my favorite um, green tea companies. If I'm gonna drink green tea, I, I never get it from the Coca-Cola ones. I always get Itoen. I don't know, I'm always quite happy with the uh, Itoen brand of tea. See, Nick saw me on Tokyo Eye the other day. <laughs> Um, what I don't get is, as a salaryman, they'll wear suits all their lives. Why wear it on graduation? It's a good question. You should ask them. I, I, think, I think they're in a hurry to start their careers. You know, like I, I, don't, I used to, when I, I remember when I first started driving, I was, I was so excited to drive. I, used, I would sleep with the keys of the car. And uh, I, I think it's kind of the same way. It's a special day, you know? You want to wear... You can't wear shorts to graduation. I think I'm going to go with this peach nectar. The milk... I, you know, the milk soda just does not look attractive to me. This is milk soda. Ugh. What? Oh, let's go peach nectar. The Hagen does does look good. Let's see here, 100 yen. That's a cherry blossom on the 100 yen. Sponsored by N. Love peach nectar. It's very, very good. There's a hug and does drink. No, these are hug and does. There's a hug and does drink. No, these are hug and does ice cream. That's ice cream. You can get a super cup. I know Jason, milk soda. I know Jason, milk soda. It looks nasty. One thing at a time. Is this what we're getting? Yeah. No, it gave me all 10 yens. How dare you? Nectar, since 1964. Hopefully not sitting there since 1964. That would make it really old. Oh wait, it's from Fujia. They make cakes and stuff. That's the um, in Gin Fujia. They make cakes and stuff. That's the um, in Ginza. That's the building where um, Sushi Jiro is in. Jiro uh, Sushi. Same building as the Fuji cake, Fujia Cake Company. All right, everybody, come by. What you can say with any drink, I'm supposing. Very good. For those of you who wanted a closer look, Hagen does a Hagen does sandwich caramel classic. They put caramel around the ice cream and then put two cookies on it. It's really good. Um, and then Lady Borden, which is another really good ice cream. They have the matcha on a stick and bonbons. And then even cheaper, which is half price, are these latte vanilla ice cream. In and it's in a pack. So you can squeeze the ice cream out. Yeah, it's really good in the summer. But I'm kind of not, you know, in an ice cream mood, sort of. You know what I mean? All right. I'm finished. <laughs> I'm finished. Mm, it's good. All right, everybody. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to be um, going home and finishing the editing. Tomorrow, I'll be doing a live stream on cherry blossom food from Ginza. 
So stay tuned for that as we eat about five or six different foods, all influenced by the cherry blossoms. And I'll be talking like a college student because it's like really awesome. Thanks everybody.